Now for the video I intended to talk about before I got derailed by the whatever. The real reason so many creators are leaving veganism. This is by Edgy Veg. You've probably seen her before. She does lots of recipe videos. I'm interested to see what she has to say. Oh no, we've got a paid promotion. Oh no. Compliment. That's the supplement. They have contacted me multiple times. I think I did respond like this is too expensive. I, I don't feel comfortable promoting this to my audience when like the Deva Multi exists. Veg One, I think it's called. That's also a very affordable one. Personally, as a vegan content creator myself, I've actually had this thought about creating less and less vegan specific content. And I think the reasons for this, some are quite obvious and some you may not have thought about. So I thought I'd share. I think the main ones, the obvious ones are like dietary and health challenges, but there's also this like societal pressure, backlash and online criticism that plays a huge role as well as mental health concerns. And then the one that most people don't think about is actually the financial stability of vegan content creators and brands not choosing to work with them anymore. Okay, I'm interested in what she has to say about that one. Uh, certainly it's not as lucrative, right? The, the vegan influencer industry for many of us, those of us who were around in 2019, 2020, I mean, everybody got a boost, right? The pandemic watching boost, right? A lot of channels benefited from that. But yeah, if you look at channels, including mine, we typically got a lot more views four or so years ago than we do now. It's easy to blame external factors, right? You know, people just aren't as interested in veganism or the algorithm, right? It's just not pushing our videos out to people when it could just be people are just not interested in us anymore. <laughs> no YouTuber wants to admit that, right? Maybe we aren't taking risks. Maybe we aren't, you know, moving along with the times and changing things. And we're still just doing the same stuff we were doing four or five years ago. Like when I look back at who's actually gone back to eating meat, it's always, always the vegan content creators that have the most extreme, most restrictive <clears throat> raw food diets, <laughs> like every time. In most of the cases that is true, but I do get comments and messages from people saying, I didn't do that. Like I really tried to do a balanced vegan diet and I really struggled with it. And yeah, I don't wanna discount those people's experiences. People do have allergies, dietary restraints, right? Like there are people who cannot eat a fully vegan diet. But yes, typically the, you know, popular, the influencer ex-vegans were eating very restrictive vegan diets. Elise, Yovana, it's not surprising to me they aren't vegan anymore. It's also not surprising to me that Vegan Zombie is still vegan. Like, of course he is. The ones who are eating a balanced vegan diet, taking the supplements they need to take, and are in it for the animals, we are probably the ones who are going to stay vegan because we're not chasing perfect health. We're not chasing views. We're not chasing a trend. We don't believe that a vegan diet makes you perfectly healthy and any sort of health issue you have has to do with what you eat. Anyway, let's continue. Just like eat normally. I've been vegan for like 12 years. I eat like cooked food, a whole wide range of fats and salts and processed and not processed. And I've never had any issues. I've also supplemented with the Complement Essentials. It's fine and it's got all the main stuff, right? Similar to, to Veg One, except it does have DHA and EPA like uh, Ritual. Is it Ritual that does that? It has iodine, which is very important, but the cost is just insane to me. I'm not saying that some creators don't have like legit issues out there and health concerns. One of my favorite vegan accounts actually went back to eating animal products because all of a sudden she developed this really strong intolerance to basically all plant protein. I mean, that's tough. And I get that there are legit reasons out there, but blaming your health issues. Tim drank his own piss, his friend's piss, thought pure water could fix his joint pains, ignored doctor's advice when his stomach was showing serious signs from piss drinking. <laughs> What are the signs? I don't need to know. Went on a fast, came back and ate a piece of salmon and blamed his ill health on veganism. Let's go back to that creator that I really love that pretty much was forced back into an omni diet. She wrote a blog post and talked a lot on her social media about how difficult this was for her, how morally it just went against everything that she like knew and believed. Her morals were completely compromised. She felt really horrible about it. She tried everything that she could to not have to go back to 
eating animals and animal products, but at the end of the day, like it just wasn't an option to be vegan anymore. And like, that sucks. Like I couldn't imagine my like entire ethos being thrown into the wind because of a health issue, like that sucks. And I totally, totally feel for her. And I would argue that yes, she was vegan. I've gotten a few messages from people really distraught that they have to eat animal products, right? Like just, you know, maybe it's financial reasons, or it's really struggling with, you know, vegan proteins. It's hard to get enough protein on a vegan diet. They don't feel good without eating, you know, some eggs. Those are the people I really feel for because they clearly are in it for the animals, right? And their body's just like, nah, fuck you. And I try to be, you know, as compassionate as possible and say, hey, you're, you're doing a great job. You're doing fantastic, but you also have to take care of yourself. And any reduction in animal products is meaningful. Honestly, I'm convinced that these people weren't really vegan in the first place. They used social media and extreme diet to gain popularity. And then when it didn't work for them anymore, they kind of just like went to the other extreme. I think for many, it's a lot more complex than that and has a lot to do with how we view ourselves, our own identity. It's really hard for people to be mature about these things, right? To be able to say, in my specific case, some animal products make me feel better. So that's what I'm going to do. It's really hard to do that without saying this is a good thing to do actually. It's really hard to maintain our vegan ethics while our behavior is moving away from it, right? So what do we see? We see ex-vegans actually advocating for omnivorism, right? Actually saying that, no, you can kill animals ethically. And I suspect that's mostly because it makes them feel better internally. And then the few who go to the super extreme, right? Like Elise Parker, you know, she she's like really, well, hopefully she's doing better now. But in the past, I mean, she clearly is roped in by the extremes, right? So she's the type of person totally fruit-based raw vegan to carnivore, you know. I don't think that has anything to do with ethics. I think it's weight obsession, right? And trying to seek this like perfect health, whatever that means. So now let's talk a bit about why a lot of creators are kind of moving away from vegan specific content or only vegan content and broadening their horizons. I'm not familiar with anyone doing that. I noticed she's not like naming names, but I, I would like to know if you guys know, please leave in the comments like what previously like vegan focused creators are focusing on other things. And it, it doesn't seem like they've left veganism. They're just not talking about it anymore. Imagine getting not only comments from the people that like actively dislike what you're doing. In this case, it's like meat eaters, it's omnis, it's people that think that you're ridiculous. Now, imagine if on top of that, you also got criticized by the very community that you're part of. And this happens a lot to vegans, it's happened a lot to me, where you're too vegan for the normal person and you're not vegan enough for the vegan. And that can like really take a toll on your mental health. Particularly if you don't have any other like vegans in your life to talk about things with and to feel like some sort of camaraderie with, yeah, I'm sure that can be really hard. I'm just not affected by that stuff. I'm just, you know, I can't, I can't pretend that it bothers me. It just doesn't. I'm very fortunate in that regard. And that's actually one of the reasons why I personally wanted to diversify a lot of my content and bring in more travel stuff and, and hair and makeup and fashion and that sort of thing, just so it's not so like vegan, vegan, rah, 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 and often can be like very negative. Even if I am trying to teach people how to cook vegan food and teaching people veganism in a really lighthearted way. I think people get bored too, right? I mean, no matter what your like topic is, if you have a really focused one, right? Like veganism, like it can get boring <laughs> at a certain point to keep talking about it. I really like that I started last year doing the controversial videos on Patreon. That's not something I ever thought I would do because I don't, I don't like having videos that you can't access without paying me. Like it still feels weird. I'm not going to lie, but it has been like a fantastic experience for me. Honestly, it's been such a great outlet because there's so many other things I want to talk about that I don't necessarily want public that I don't necessarily want on the channel. It's just been nice to have somewhere to post that. And the quality of comments I get from patrons is just way, way better <laughs> than on YouTube. And I've gotten such good feedback and I've learned so much from other people. It's just been, it's been awesome. But also I do talk about other things on the channel occasionally that don't have anything, you know, I talked about what did I talk about recently? I don't know. There was something that had nothing to do with veganism that I talked about. It helps that I'm like, I'm not a brand. I don't view myself as a brand. I'm just me, you know, and I just make what I want to make. 
and hope people want to watch it and I try to improve stuff and you know that that's kind of it and I don't really do sponsorships so I've done one my entire YouTube career. I just had my YouTube birthday. I started this channel June 2009. Is that not insane? Over the years I've worked with a ton of really big vegan brands and I've worked with a ton of really small ones but here's what's happened. Lately those opportunities now for a lot of vegan creators myself included have been taken away because as veganism became more mainstream and normies and, and omnis were eating more and more or drinking more and more plant-based products all of a sudden all these vegan brands were more mainstream and what they wanted was not a vegan specific creator they wanted uh. a normal creator someone that ate a normal diet Diet that just happened to also use some plant-based products. That's really interesting. I thought she was going to talk about just the, the entire sponsorship landscape has changed a lot ba just based on the emails I get, right? Like a few years ago, you could get a good amount of money, right? And most of the deals were, hey, you talk about a product, you can do either just its own video for more money, or what most people do is an integration, right? Where you talk about the product for, you know, a minute to two minutes within your video. But now what I'm seeing is a lot of the emails I get it's either just a, a, a free product, you know, you get their product, product to try, or it's like affiliate stuff. Or what was one? If you made a post and you did something, they'd give you like $25, something like that. I'm seeing a lot more of that sort of stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if, unless you're one of the huge creators, right? They, they can do the, the sponsorships for thousands and thousands of dollars. But I think a lot of these companies have realized that it's maybe not as lucrative as they had hoped, right? I'm sure they've been burned by a lot of deals with creators where they paid a creator a lot of money, the creator talked about the product, and it didn't result in a lot of sales. And the economy, of course, always plays a role. But um, yeah, just based on the emails I get, it seems like things have changed somewhat. Working with someone that's not vegan definitely gives them a wider audience, gives them wider reach. But now what, what, do, what do we do with the small amount of the pie that already was so difficult to share amongst all of us? So brands <laughs> like Beyond Meat partnered with celebrities like Kim Kardashian to mm -hmm. talk about their chicken product. I mean, it sucks. So now we aren't getting the right regular deals and we're not getting the vegan deals, which means that we now have to also diversify our content. If you are pushing vegan, 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 you are automatically a vegan creator, which pigeonholes you and people don't want to work with you. And that's ridiculous and it sucks, but it is what it is. Also, you have less opportunity to reach people to get more views, right? Which will hurt your sponsorships, how much you can get paid, if companies are interested in you, right? I'll be honest, I have thought about changing my channel to just... I don't know my name or something because again I do like to talk about other things but number one again Patreon doing the controversial videos that has really satisfied that itch that urge and number two I do already talk about other things right I do like the supplement scam type stuff right that is not really vegan specific thinking about doing a video on a YouTube doctor who's just so scary. But yeah, it's it's a bit like the, you know, Minecraft gamers, right? Or, or any sort of gamer, if you choose like one or two games, and then those games aren't popular anymore. Hmm. But also for me, and I'm sure for her and any like vegan activist, this isn't just a channel to make money, right? To get views. It's, it's to influence people as well. It is really important to me to spread veganism and to help vegans be healthy and happy to move away from that is that just that's just not that's not what I'm here for. And then on top of that, if you do get a vegan brand sponsorship, I got a vegan brand sponsorship. Okay, come closer. Here's the tea. I got uh -oh. a sponsorship with a very large vegan egg company. Vegan what? Egg company? It did super well. The campaign was crazy successful. And then they refused to pay me. <gasps> so it's been like two years now and I still haven't gotten paid. They ghosted me for a full year when I started like threatening that I was gonna go public with it. Then they started answering, but they told me that they didn't have any more money to pay me with. But then when I opened my Instagram account, they're paying like professional athletes. So that's also the other thing. And I've seen it happen with a couple vegan brands. That is terrible. I did not think she was gonna say that she just straight up did not get paid. I did make a video talking about why I don't do sponsorship deals. I'm not totally anti them. I just haven't found another product that I'm interested in or a deal that I think makes sense. And I talked about, I forgot, it's some sort of vegan like beauty box. 
and they wanted me to agree to sign a contract promoting the product before I had even tried it. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable signing anything without trying it. Like, send me a box. What the F? And they were like, oh, we know you're going to love it. Gross. Sounds like Just Egg to me. If they still haven't paid, she needs to spill the tea. Oh, I forgot about Just Egg. It would not surprise me, honestly, given the kind of weird stuff they've done in the past. As a small vegan brand founder who doesn't have funding or wealth, I can't afford influencers' flat rates. At their rates, it's a big gamble that rarely produces enough immediate sales to cover the costs. From a branding perspective, it makes sense as a long-term investment. Branding is the act of paying for the possibility of sales many years in the future. That's a corporate strategy that takes massive funding. Yeah. We need quick sales. We need to pay commissions. I offer an affiliate program with automated payments, but any real influencer declines. Then I get spammed with non-influencers trying to get free products and coupon websites trying to vulture commissions, so I gave up on that route. Social media also demotes native posts from brands slash businesses, forcing us to pay for views. So I'm trapped ad spending with social media companies to generate quick sales to survive. I'd much rather the commissions be going to influencers. Maybe I just need some help making a plan for this, but the agencies are ridiculously expensive. Interesting to hear from the other side. So I liked that video a lot. I agree with pretty much every single thing she said. I would love to know your thoughts and I would love it if you like the video and subscribe, of course. And of course, thank you so much to my members and patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. One is a vlog. The other is a controversial topic that's like unrelated to veganism. I just posted the controversial for June. Thanks again, guys. New video soon.